Hello and welcome back to the Singapore Spring Pro League. This is Babel and I'm here today bringing you round two of the professional team league that we have here in Singapore. Of course, this is a spring championship. The winner will walk home with 3,500 Singapore dollars as well as the undisputed number one seed into the Southeast Asian Finals. Winner in the SEA Finals will then proceed on to represent all of Southeast Asia in the Spring Championship Finals. That said, we finally have a game here today. We got a very exciting series. The first one is going to be Relics up against Power Belief. Next one after that at 9 p.m. will be the series between Sage Gaming as well as Resurgence. This current one that we're bringing you right now it is going to be hype because Relics, they cannot afford to lose any more games. Power of Belief, they are not looking good with zero points. Relics has got only one point coming out from the first week. So without further ado, let's go directly into this game number one. And we're directly going into Infernal Shrines. Now, do note that the team with high seeding coming in from the Nexus Championship will be able to make the decision whether they want to go for first pick or map pick. And that will be Relics. So they decided to go for a map pick. Power of Believe with the first pick and ban, banning out the Tyrande. Kelthas, nothing too surprising. We also see Jaina getting picked up first hand. And Murden going towards Relics. One more pick, it is going to be for them. Uh, system's kind of slow, but it, it, will, it will be a Zagara. So Zagara, Murden for Relics. And it looks like they already have a plan. Uh, very quick picks on Zagara right now. It's very consistent with the um, NA meta. We see a lot of Zagara being played in uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen, in Sky Temple, in Infernal Shrines. These are all battlegrounds in which Zagara has got great control. Also, a uh, very interesting situation here is that Relic seems to be going for what we call an AoE-centric crowd control composition. Zagara opens up the possibility for that, finishing it up with an ETC, or maybe even just uh, an AoE damage dealer. That is going to be really good already with the help of the Devouring Maw on Zagara. Also, you have the possibility of a Zagara Tool Void Prison follow-up, all of which provides a lot of crowd control and insane teamfight mechanic. Power of Belief right now with the Jaina. Johanna getting picked up as well. I really like Johanna Jaina because both of these heroes will be able to take out all of those Scouts and Minions. Uh, that is the objective of this Battleground. You want to take out all of those uh, Skeleton-looking thing. They will give you counts. Once, once you hit 40, you will unlock a Punisher. The Punisher does exactly what it's been called. He punishes. So he's going to go down the lane and probably targets against heroes uh, as compared to targeting against structures. This is the unique point about this objective in this battleground. You can see how the Punisher looked like in that small little icon below the draft there. It does not look very pleasant and not very happy looking as well. Now POB will also pick up a healer first. This is a sign of weakness. Pick up Malfurion so early on. I think it's not really recommended. There's a lot of viable heroes right now, which includes Malfurion, Ragar. The Chinese, they really like Ragar a lot. And uh, they also play him to a great uh, effectiveness. Um, there's also the Karazim Morales, as well as a bunch of other possible healer like Uther. Going for Malfurion here really just says a lot about the uh, well the comfort level of the support player instead of POB. By the way, guys, the overlays are not wrong. It is a best of two. What this means is that there will be a possibility of a tie after today's games, which means that both teams will walk home with only one point. And it's very important to note that if you go home with one point, yes, it is a huge disadvantage for your enemy, but it's also not good for you. You generally want to take a tie game against a team that you cannot beat and you want to win the games that you uh, are confident of winning. POB, they came off against Resurgence 0-2 last uh, week, um, Friday in round one. Here, oh, I would say that it's a huge success for them if they, if they can finish this series with a tie. Of course, winning Relics uh, three uh, points would be the ideal position for them to be in, but... Well, we'll see how that leads us. Feldstad and Karazim getting banned out. Feldstad banned, I like that a lot. That's a huge counter against Zagar's Devouring Maw. They address that beautifully. Karazim getting banned out. He, he is, in my opinion, one of the best uh, support because there is also the possibility of picking up another secondary support as the draft go along the way. There's a huge potential for heals in front as well. Muradin's going to be there. Zagar probably somewhere in the center, but they will still, regardless, go for the Sonya. Sonia Murden, both of these heroes in the front line. We got Zagara somewhere in the middle, and it seems like they will definitely go for Uther here. I really advocate Uther because Sonia needs a lot of heals in the front line, but they will go for the Vala first. Now, it's a challenge for POB to pick up Uther Malfurion. I don't think it's possible, um, which is why I would very much prefer if they 
don't pick Malfurion so early on. But then again, we'll see how that's going to work out. Probably a comfort pick for them, but Vala, Sonya, Muradin, Zagara. Lots of damage in the backline for Relics. P.O.B. What do they need? They probably want to get a little bit more damage in. And from the looks of it, Rainer looks like a pretty awesome pick here. Rainer is a great counter against Sonya Muradin. He has the possibility to go for those frontline damage, and it will be a Rainer. The other one that I really advocate going for is please get another Warrior, because Johanna is not good against Sonia Muradin. There's nothing she can do. She does have Iron Skin, but those are not Platinum Skin. There's no way she's going to hold off the aggression of Sonia Muradin and a really irritating Vala from the backline. You've seen those cardboard videos of Vala throwing out his crossbow arrows. Yes, that is a pain, and they will get a Tyrell. I like Tyrell a lot, kind of counters against Sonya with Sanctification, but then again it's a very execution reliant hero. I'm very worried about the level of play because they have two range damage dealer which means that Tyrell have to play safe and that they cannot dive too far in front. If the if Johanna lands a good blessed shield, maybe Tyrell's gonna go in front. If, if, if Tyrell's Sanctification's in front, Johanna as well as uh, Tyrell's gonna be there, but we will have Rainer Jane on the back line completely exposed. Now, surprise, surprise, it is not going to be Uther. It will be Morales. We've seen um, in the last week, we have actually seen Sage Gaming ban Morales against Relics. Now, this is a huge, huge, uh, we could say credit to them. The fact that Sage already knows that they probably want to prefer going for this Morales pick as compared to the Uther. Now, Uther has got a very low win rate, which is why he's not getting prioritized these days. Completely understand that. Um, but then again, you really want to wonder, uh, what can Morales do here? She can actually go for a Steam Drone, but I kind of think that it will be the Medivac. Medivac in Southeast Asia, we got a really weird way of playing this particular build. It's called the We're Gonna Hide in a Spaceship strategy. Yep. They're going to hide in the spaceship, probably baiting the enemy to take it down. The moment they do that successfully, it will be a complete disaster because all of your damage uh, spells are already being expanded onto the medivac. Of course, it could be a, a bit of a distraction. Also, a double-edged sword, if you ask me, simply because that will be a very, very interesting position for anyone to be in. If you go into the medivac and you leave some of the uh, heroes that are in the vicinity unattended, they can be possible targets for the enemy as well. That's why it's important to note when's a good time, when's a good position. It's absolutely execution reliant. There is the possibility we're going to see a steam drone on a Sonya, but I don't know how that's going to work out. Guys, let us know what you think in the chat. POB versus Relics. Uh, and I think that this is going to be exciting. Of course, this is only the appetizer. And I say that because Power of Belief, they they finish in third place. They finish in third place in the Nexus Championship, which is kind of like the qualifying circuit for the Spring Pro League. Whereas Relics, they retain the top spot as the most feared team in Southeast Asia. Not just Singapore, in all of SEA. The funny thing about Relics is that they unfortunately lost a game to Sage Gaming last week. So... Sage Gaming, if you wonder who are these guys, that's a Revenant team. Revenant used to be on Relics, and we'll talk about the drama all of again uh, as the stream goes along. But um, just to let you guys know, Sage Gaming, they came in fourth place. They got the last seed in the Spring Pro League, but they got one game off Relics. It could be Tilt, I don't know, but we got to see how this is all going to work out. Tweet at us using the hashtag SGSpringPro, and we'll be able to see your tweet. I will read out some of this tweet along the way as the game goes by. Also, follow us on Twitter at the official Bliss Heroes SEA. That is Bliss Heroes with the SEA tag behind on Twitter. Follow us there. Tweet at us. And we really appreciate our company here tonight. There's a lot of great games on Twitch tonight. Specifically, there is the Goal League that uh, Gillyweed and Zoya is casting. I'm going to do the SEA Spring Pro League because this is my home base. And... I'm not going to let anyone invade this base right now. So <laughs> I'm going to be here taking care of what I would say is the most precious to me. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate you guys coming here to show your support. Um, it is, after all, at the end of the day, a really awesome, awesome set of games we're going to see. Just to check, I think that the stream is not showing the correct screen. 
So we want to make sure that that is the absolutely correct one. It could be also a bit of a delay, guys. Don't worry, the game is coming on. We're going into Infernal Shrines right now, as you can see. And it looks like this battleground is not a huge favorite battleground for a lot of people. But Relics, they love this battleground. They really do love it. They play a lot of games on it. They tried to challenge the Americans on this battleground, and they lost miserably. But the point is that they like this battleground. There has to be a reason for it. And I think it's just the fact that they have a stronger map control. They got a stronger pressure across all three lanes, which is why they want to make sure that they uh, capitalize it. And the other way you can actually play this is on Dragonshire. Okay, we are actually going to have a remake. It seems like there's a bit of a wrong hero pick here. So what you get is three minutes of Babel talking and no games. I'm so sorry about it, but you can blame Kenny all you want. Uh, by the way, who is Kenny? That would be Trinity. Uh, a very close uh, friend of mine. Absolutely biased at his stage right now, but I've known him for a total of uh, four years, I think. Is it four? Has it been that long? Let me see. Um, no, three. I've known him for three years. He came with me from a different game together. We I used to cast a different game before Heroes was developed, and, and now he's also competing in this one. So very, very excited for him. Um, okay, so what we're going to talk about now is the SG Spring Pro League, how the entire Singapore circuit is being run, and how it all adds up. So we got top four teams in Singapore playing in what we call the Singapore Spring Pro League. The top team from the SG Spring Pro League will walk home with $3,500 and the top seed in the SEA Regionals. The other three teams will get relegated down to the Open Finals in which they will play off against five teams qualifying from the five seats from the qualifier on 30th of January. So that will happen on 30th of January, the qualifier. If you are from Singapore, do kindly uh, go for that one. And uh, who knows, you may be able to win some good money as well. We got a lot of prize money there. I think that, uh, also, speaking of prize money, the SG Spring Pro League does not reward any losers. <laughs> in, in, in the Pro League, only the first place gets money. Second, third, fourth, they will get their paycheck when they play in the Open Finals. And when is that? The Open Finals for Singapore will happen on the 20th of February. That's quite far. Um, so not to worry about that just yet. As for the rest of Southeast Asia, they're going to do qualifiers, a total of four qualifiers from now till uh, mid-February. And that's going to happen, I think, tomorrow onwards, Philippines, Malaysia, as well as Thailand. They're going to start running their own qualifier, qualifying a total of two teams at a time. And eight teams will be playing in uh, the finals of every single country before we go directly into the SEA Finals. When's the SEA Finals, you ask? 5th to 6th of March. It will be two days worth of games. We're also going to see a group stage uh, elimination first, getting played, and then teams getting seeded into the upper and lower brackets, respectively, for the second day. Only one team. There is no prize money in the SEA Finals, but only one team will be able to get the opportunity to play for their share of 500,000 US dollars in the Spring Championship Finals. That's going to happen in Spring, of course. And a little bit more insights into the backstory here of the SG uh, Spring Pro League. I would like to let you guys know of the current score. We got Resurgence at three points, as well as Relics. And uh, the other team, Sage Gaming, with one point each, with POB at zero points from the results of the first week. This is the second set of games we're going to see today. It is a uh, second round of games, sorry. And uh, by second round, I mean it's week two. We're also going to see a lot of um, a lot of great synergy here. And I don't know what Zender wants me to do, but it seems like we are actually... Oh, okay. Uh, just to let you guys know, game's going to get remake. That's all he wants to tell me. Great. Uh, this stream is actually produced by Zenden and uh, the big fella, Wayne. Uh, so, hope I can give them some love as well in the chat. Uh, just really happy to have you guys with us today. It's um, I know it's really, really early in NA. It would probably be in the AM. Uh, for EU, it's about maybe about 2 p.m., 1 p.m., plus minus a little bit. 1 p.m. after daylight savings. And for North America, specifically West Coast, uh, seems like it is actually uh, 4 a.m. 
yeah, it is that early. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you are from those region, if you're from Southeast Asia, my home, my homies, my boys, thank you for being here. Really happy to have you as well. This is the SG Spring Pro League. A lot of secrets can be learned from this team. So I hope you guys enjoy the games we have today. And just overall, very exciting series. A good news for fans of POB. Uh, they will not be playing with La La Land today. They are playing with a full lineup. Saber is back. So I'm expecting a lot of good games from uh, POB. And that's power of belief for all of you guys who don't know what that stands for. Two teams that you're going to see today. Relics and power of belief. Relics, they need a little introduction. These are the resident champions of Southeast Asia on the road to BlizzCon last year, 2015. POB, this is a team that formed one week before the competition last year. The core members stuck together. They got good, respectable finishes. I think top, uh, I think fifth or sixth place finish in the SG Finals, and um, that that's already very good. That's really already very good. And they they, they beat teams that are kind of like favorite to win, even in the Nexus Championship in December. That tournament was really really an eye opener. X My Revenge team, also known as Team Vestigial. Those are that's a team that's favorite to win or rather get top four. But POB, they came in, they took them down, they took down Sage Gaming. Uh, back then was known as Hazmat Bandits. All of this information, man, it's all online. And POB proceeded on to a very close series of games against Resurgence. And here we go. I know the games last week did not look close, but that's because Resurgence also had a bit of a roster shakeup. And they also didn't have a full team lineup for POB. I'm excited to ri to witness what POB has to offer. Here we go, game number one in the blue corner. We got Relics. And Trinity gonna be playing as a Zagara. Zayce onto the Sonya. Julian will be playing as Morales. Yu Yang looks like he's gonna be the Murden Mur onto that Vala. And on the side here for the red team, we got Power of Belief. An abbreviation that's a POB. Saber will be playing as the Jaina. We also got Mr. Deja Vu onto the Tyrol. Jumping will be playing as the other warrior that is Johanna. Anthony seen the support onto Malfur. And last but not least, we also got Zaz and playing as the Rainer. So far, looks like it looks to be a very, very different strategy. Relics kind of consistent with uh, most of the other regions as well. Often go for uh, structural damage right off the bat. Possible flank from POB right now. Looks like they're not able to catch Julian a little bit closer and maybe the Entangling Roots gonna connect but there we go Saber not connecting those uh, Ice Lands or rather Frostbolt as well as the uh, well Kuna Cold or the Blizzard anything to name it he hasn't he has missed all of it. In terms of build and talent options it seems like it's gonna be scouting drone for uh, Morales as well as reconstitution out for Zagara. We got a bit of the uh, multi-shot build on Vala as well as War Paint for Sonya. Murden, that looks like a reverberation. And on this side here, it seems like there is a possible gank against Zayce, but it's not gonna connect. On this side here for POB, I like this pick a lot. Looks like it's really, really good. It is give me more, it increases the amount of heal. And that is a very, very humble, uh, well, we could say Rainer, because normally Rainer would be going for Season Marksman, which means a lot more damage. I kind of think Season Marksman is not absolutely necessary, uh, but it does apply a lot of pain onto the front line right there. For Joanna, definitely gonna go for Night Take Spawn. Moonfire onto that Malfurion, as well as uh, we're also gonna get the, um, the Moon Burn, sorry. As well as Purge Evil on Tyrael as Benalis is going to conjure up on uh, Jaina. And a top shrine is going to spawn here for both teams. And it seems like the Scouting Drone is being already put to good use here as well. Zagara is going to be here. A lot of vision for Relics. POB is going to take some time. They don't look like they're very interested in this objective. Or rather in this shrine right now. Looks like they're gonna go for uh, a different strategy of going towards different lanes. Not sure how this is gonna work out. Bottom lane Deja Vu is not gonna win against Zayz. Sonya is just too painful to deal with. Meanwhile, it looks like we got one full level 8 for Relics. Just to let Zenden know the abbreviation for Relics is R-E-L. We're gonna keep it consistent. Okay, he's gonna change it. Meanwhile, uh, Okay, finally we're gonna see POB with a bit of rotation that uh, 
so-called quote-unquote strategy to soak the lane did not work out they're finally gonna invest a lot more resources here in the top lane four members gonna be here Baneling's burst not gonna do anything German dropping way too low stance gonna connect as well Joanna probably gonna go down but there goes the skin some heals from Elfurin very clutch great save there overall but it's very very much a consolation prize this objective looks very much in control here for relics already 40 of 140 they will be looking at the first ever punisher and they have to come up with a plan pob all right off the bat already behind one full level lead i repeat one full level lead with an arcane punisher that just stunned Tyrell, going into a lot of damage against Mr. Deja Vu. Trinity dropping very low. Some heals from Julian keeping him alive, but Tyrell will go down. The Archangel's uh, Wrath will not be able to take down anyone at all. Gina also takes the fall. Jumping dropping a little bit. Unfortunately, the frag grenade will not connect. Coming up from Morales. We're also going to see Rainer in the bottom lane just soaking away. And Relic just capitalizing this a little bit further. Zessen dropping. Zessen does go down. P.O.B. playing from behind in just under four minutes. They got a lot more to, of catching up to do here. And they're also going to lose a fort right on the top lane. This is not looking good at all. We're looking at more talent options coming in. And it looks like it's going to be focus attack onto the Sonya as well as Rainer. And uh, Ferocious healing on Sonya as well. We're also going to see a full-on multi-shot build with Arsenal pick up into a searing attack. And also gonna see uh, Sonia and oh, looks like it's not good. Both of these wars in a lot of trouble. Blizzard will connect. Second wave, not so much, but they look like they want to pick up the siege camp. We'll be able to do so successfully. Trinity is gonna be here, but nobody really cares. One penetrating round, one bullet, and Zagara's gone. Already been pushed back. We're also gonna see the better momentum up on Zagara. And do note that this one does reduce ability cooldowns, and that is every single ability, including devouring Maw. Not just basic ability, it does differ a little bit from other uh, warriors as well as other heroes that has got better momentum. I think Johannes only affect the basic uh, basic abilities. Now also gonna affect every single ability. Yeah, it does of course. Why not? I'm drunk. So early in the day. We're also gonna see advanced block on Morales with cleanse. And on the side, Muradin, just a very standard Muradin with piercing bolt as well as a thunder strike. A thunder burn, my bad. Thunder strike level 13. So Shrine's gonna activate right here in the mid lane. They also get a Kajra, very, very nice uh, extra edge here. But the good news for POB is that they will also pick up the Bruiser camp in the top lane. So far, Relic's already in position here, securing the perimeters uh, to this uh, entrance here for the Shrine in the mid lane. Looking like it's gonna be a Frost Punisher. Bottom lane, Zagar just basically soaking the lane, deterring aggression. Landing those crypt humors, making sure that you know he gets some extra healing uh, when necessary. And that will be extra 20% of health restoration. Still relics looking really, really comfortable. POB. Finally gonna try and make something happen here. Four members rotation down to the bottom lane. It's the only thing they can do. No holy ground, Zagara, a little bit of trouble. Nice devouring more Trinity. Maybe they're still alive. No Zasan goes in. Closes him out, lights up for Trinity right there. We got POB getting a bit, a quarter of a level EXP from that kill. But looks like they still have to deal with this second Punisher. That's gonna plow down the mid lane. Mur on the top lane, already clearing out the Bruiser camp. The Frost Punisher. Looking very much like Frosty the Snowman's elder brother. And we also have a lot of stuns going up probably. If they do connect, it will not do anything. Zasan, the Rainer, uh, very effective hero overall in Inferno Shrines because it will have the ability to take down this uh, Punisher very quickly. A lot of uh, great distance between Rainer as well as Punisher. Do note that in this entire game, Rainer has the longest range, and that has not changed since day one. Finally gonna see some heroics getting picked up on the side of POB, but just a close up for both teams. It will be the Avatar on Relics as well as Medivac, uh, the drop ship.
We also will see the Devouring Maw, Shrave, Rough of the Berserker. And for POB, it looks like it's going to be Hyperion into Blessed Shield Tranquility. And hold that thought, we're also going to see a nice Entangling Rune not connecting, Trinity dropping. And Zagar's already gone, Zay's dropping a lot of HP as well. Anthony seen with Tranquility very aggressively positioned. Yu Yang does have the Dwarf Toss, don't want to go for that. There goes the Blessed Shield jumping from behind. A lot of damage against Relics, looks like they're going to lose a lot more members. Two men down, Zay's and Murder will tap the well and tap out, pulling back at the same time. But it will be the Tranquility, as well as Sanctification, maybe even the Water Elemental up on the Jaina. Yes, it is. Looking to be very, very solid for P.O.B. We got a replay of the last fight, so let's break it down for you guys with Professor Babel. Looking like the replay system is not working so quickly. We're going to give it a second or two. In case you're wondering, um, in the bottom left-hand corner, later on in the replay screen, you will see... Ah, there we go. Real time. Now this is the replay, great positioning on the Hyperion, Trinity getting picked off first, was a great play on the part for uh, Jaina. You could also see that Yu Yang was doing his best as a distraction, coming in from behind, but Jiming just knew exactly what he wanted, locking in directly on Mur with the Blessed Shield connecting first on uh, Julian, left to the Morales. Now hold that thought, we got a bit of action in real time, and it seems like uh, Jiming is going to take the fall, nope, still staying alive. Oh, there we go. Finally, back to real time, and down goes Johanna. So nothing special, just a four-man rotation coming up from Relics. Uh, for POB, they used that opportunity to go down to the bottom siege camp and pick up a Kashra. Uh, brothers right there. The Goat Brothers will be plowing down both the mid and uh, bottom lane. So not going for objective. Seems to be part of a plan here for POB. Not really convinced by that, but I also absolutely agree that Jaina and Raynor, those are what we call late game assassins. They need level 13, level 16 to be very effective. Look at the giant killer pickup, as well as that uh, advanced ice block. Those are what is going to be really essential for those heroes to really perform. Hyperion, a bit of a waste. Zay's the Sonya in a little bit of trouble. Nice penetrating round as well. It's a, a bit of a chain stun going in. Zay's probably going to drop. Nice tranquility, but the Devar Maul will connect on three target. Saber again waiting for the cooldown in just about a few seconds. Mercing's by Great Strafe doing a lot of damage, but there goes the invulnerability on the Sanctification. And it seems like POB is calling for a retreat already. Jumping with yet another Shield Glare. Saber does have the mana, does have the cooldown already off. Blizzard connecting a little bit, not much, but Mur already did the damage and the paints on him. Mr. Deja Vu overextending, a bit of a mistake on the set of POB, gonna want to pull back right now, but there goes Yu Yang giving the chase. Great draft toss into a great stun. Anthony Scene, Johanna, both of them going down. Melfrid's gone as well. There goes Tiro, there's a three man down, and the Punisher out from nowhere. There's the RKO. Assassin will go down. Saber's gone. It's a five man team wipe. POB did not see that coming. Out from the corner of the eye. And all of a sudden, a wild Randy Orton appears from nowhere. <laughs> there is the Punisher's main job, just to stun. And boy, they were stunned. Completely stunned out of their minds. Did not see that coming. A lot of greedy plays on the side of POB. Of course, they already used most of the heroics. They should be pulling back way early on. That re-engage by Mr. Deja Vu was a huge mistake. All they needed to do was just wait for Jaina to land those Blizzard. Well, we actually have a replay for that. Thank you very much, Zenden, the producer. So we're going into the replay. This is where uh, the fight happened. Great Condemn. As you can see, Anthony Seen already dropping very low. Mr. Deja Vu for no apparent reason jumping in front. No heals, by the way, at this point. Only regrowth, which is really, really bad. We also got a fight in real time. We're going to bring you back to real time right now. Nobody died yet, guys. Don't worry. Only Tyrell. So that will be the uh, a bit of a burst on the side of Relics. It's apparently the party booster. And a two-level lead for Relics. They got back the lead. They're very, very confident about it. The meat fort. We're also going to see a little bit of uh, fort damage against Relics. But they don't seem to care as much. They got the Goat Brothers behind them. Looking to do a lot of damage on this fort. Trinity with a Devouring one nicely placed directly in front of the gate there. And the best potential, not so much. Jaina is going to drop first. The ice block wasn't used for some reason. Unfortunately, I think that that stun from Yu Yang was just very much on point. And Sabert was not able to go into ice block. That would have been a complete uh, turnaround if that ice block did went down. Tiro would have respawned. Sanctification would be available for the re-engage. Jumping does have Blessed Shield up. Hyperion was also being used. So... 
a little bit regrettable. Unfortunately, Jaina wasn't able to stay alive there. Shrine's gonna spawn right now. We got Siege Camp again getting picked up here by Relics. Three level lead. And I don't know how this is looking to you guys, but it seems like Relics uh, once again playing very comfortably. Biggest mistake here on a set of POV is the fact that they are not really uh, focusing on anyone. And I would say that is because Raynor does not have level 16 yet. And Jaina does not have the ability. It, you just don't want to underestimate the importance of uh, numbing blast. The Cone of Cold root is very, very important for extra burst damage, uh, for pullbacks, for turnarounds. It's important to get a level 16. Also, do note that the Bullseye pick up a level 16 for Raynor. Boy, that's an important talent here. That's a lot of stun, a lot more control for POB. Looks like it is going to be a third set of Punisher for Relics. Raynor completely out of position. Where's the warrior when you need it? There goes yet again. The Tranquility getting consumed by devouring more. Yu Yang locking down against Anthony Seen right now. And Tranquility not healing much at the at the end there. Mr. Deja Vu still has got that sanctification up on his Tyrael. Pops it. Baits out, but they want to go for Joanna in the back line. Some slows coming out. Not gonna be enough for the chase there against Johanna, but Tyrael will take the fall. Two men down on the side here for POB. And that numbing blast looks to be ineffective. When you are two level down, you got a Punisher pushing, this may be game. In under 15 minutes, we already see two keep gone. POB, they have a lot of potential in this game here, but just a bit of a bad mistake. I think um, two very costly mistakes, two greedy plays, and there goes the GG. So we got Punisher, otherwise duped as the Randy Orton in this game. <laughs> And five members of Relics pushing out the corner. The court will go down. And the BM Medivac from Julian. What a gutsy play from Relics. They will proceed on to game number two with a one game lead. He can land those bullets on. Jumping looking for the stun bolt. Will not be able to do anything. Zazan goes in. Nice cleave against Yu Yang. Yu Yang putting back out again. And Jumping also going to be okay. But on the flip side, we got Uther dropping way too low. And a penetrating round will pick him off. Jumping down to just about 40% right now. Zazan. Mounts up, gets spotted by a tower, will have to pull back. Relics gains the upper hand once again. They don't really have a level lead right now. And they're going to be very careful because of that. But they do have a tribute uh, extra advantage.